Tonight, find out who's putting extra layers on Pike County citizens. Plus, we'll see how students take on the task of holiday shopping. Stay tuned to our Trojan Vision Nightly News starts now. From the High Definition Digital Production Center on the Troy campus, with news from Troy University locations around the world, this is Troy Trojan Vision Nightly News. Hello and welcome to Troy Trojan Vision Nightly News for November, November 27, 2012. I'm Rachel Scarborough. And I'm Judson Garner. Thank you for joining us this evening. Well, it's not even December, but most people have already began counting down the days until Christmas, and one toy organization is making sure that residents in Pike County stay warm during the holiday season. Bailey Majors reports. Troy University Student Alabama Education Association are continuing a Christmas project started in November where they are able to keep residents of Pike County warm during the winter. And we're collecting coats for um, the children who are in need here in Pike County and a lot of people are doing food drives and we just thought with the cold weather coming we just really want to make sure we can provide that necessity for children in the area. Co-president Brock says though that SAEA is looking for coats for children, there are also other items that can be donated. Scarves, coats, gloves, uh, blankets, anything you might have that you're, is in good condition but you're not using anymore. We're going to service the needs of our elementary students all the way through high school, so uh, any size range uh, will be acceptable for coats. Brock encourages all students to go through their closets and donate any clothes or jackets that they no longer wear. She also says that the coat drive is a great way to give back to Troy. I think it's really important for all of our students to be involved. Uh, one of the things that SAEA really strives for prom to promote is community involvement. And we really encourage students to get out and be involved because this could be your child one day who might need something. It's just a great way to get back to our community. The Coats for Christmas drive will run until December 5th. Students can drop off coats and other items at the SGA office located in the Trojan Center, room 215, or in Hawkins Hall, room 302. We want to encourage everyone here to um, get out and support this. It's a great cause, and we'll be going into delivering our coats next week on December 5th, so don't wait until the last minute. Go ahead and go through those things over the weekend and try to get them in here Monday or Tuesday before dead day. Bailey Majors, Troy Trojan Vision News. And for more information on the Coats for Christmas Drive, you can contact Dr. Manick at csmanick at troy.edu. A pair of Troy University choral groups will show off their skills this evening. The Collegiate Singers and the Concert Chorale will present a choral showcase tonight starting at 7.30 at the First Baptist Church in Troy. The concert will feature songs from a variety of musical genres presented by the two choirs. The concert is free and open to the public. Members feel concerts like tonight open these, opens the eyes and ears of new audiences for the college choirs. The people in Corral, I mean, we're the next generation of music. We're the, stu we're the ambassadors for the choir department. And it's just a really a great way to hear older music and newer music. Once again, the Choral Showcase will be tonight at 730 at First Baptist Church in downtown Troy. Admission is free. Troy University's SAVE Project is providing a creative way to honor the memory of a loved one tomorrow. The SAVE Project will have a balloon release Wednesday at 5.30 on the Bibb Graves Quad starting at 2 p.m. Troy University's faculty, staff, and students will be able to stop by the SAVE Project's table on the quad and decorate a balloon in honor of someone they have lost. All of the balloons will be released at 5.30. The SAVE Project hopes this will be a good way for students to deal with feelings of grief as the holiday season approaches. Around the holidays, a lot of students um, struggle with grief of losing their loved ones or um, having some kind of loss within their life that uh, is really difficult around the holidays, especially because it's a time for a lot of families to get together. So we wanted to give students the opportunity to remember those that they love and that they've lost. Once again, the grief balloon decorating will begin at 2 Wednesday on the Bib Graves Quad and all of the balloons will be released at 5.30 p.m. Well, Rachel, fun fact. Christmas is only 28 days away. That's right, Judson, and a big part of the holiday season is gift giving. But this can be a strain on pockets of college students. Deatra Montgomery talked to students about their shopping plans this year. The hustle and bustle of Black Friday is gone, and the clicking from Cyber Monday has faded away. But people are still searching for big bargains for Christmas gifts this year. 
So where would a college student search for Christmas gifts? And I just window shop throughout the malls until I find something that somebody would like. Dillard's, Macy's, ooh, Foot Locker. Walmart, Kmart, Sears, most of those cheap stores that you can get a good price. And while they're shopping around, deals are a key factor. I like New York and Company. They usually have their 70% off around Christmas time. And then the semi-annual sale at Victoria's Secret is always great right after Christmas. I love to shop out of season. That's when you get the best deals and everything. You go to consignment stores. Anything where 50% off because I'm a poor black student, yeah. Well, you know, it's, it's hard out here. The struggle is real. Many students learn the value of a dollar once they enter college, but since Christmas is the time of giving and receiving, many students say that giving what you can is very important. When you have friends that you're giving gifts for and you know exactly what they want or what they would love, the joy in seeing their face when they open it up, and this is worth it. There's a ton of people out there, even in Troy, the community, that um, are unfortunate and they don't have as much as a lot of families here, and uh, I've been blessed to you know, have a lot of material possessions. But hey... Who doesn't like getting something for Christmas? And every Troy University student has their own top gift request. Some kind of jacket that was warm and looked professional. Uh, I'd really like some uh, some new loafers. A, uh, a 380 Ruger. It's a revolver handgun. Some 24s on my car. I want the Big Bang Theory seasons on DVD. A tablet. I would love a new cell phone. The best gift right now is to go home. D'Arthur Montgomery, Troy Trojan Vision News. The last day for classes of the semester is December the 4th, followed by finals and then Christmas break. And now taking a look at news from around the state in Mobile, the mother of a woman who was allegedly beaten by her girlfriend's brother is pushing for more charges in the attack. Christy Taylor says daughter Mallory Owens was attacked because of her sexual orientation. Taylor wants assault charges upgraded to attempted murder. And in Huntsville, a 42-year-old North Alabama man is facing child sex abuse charges after police say he had sex with a teenager, a teenage girl he befriended on Facebook. Police say an anonymous tipster led them to Anthony Wade Sykes of Huntsville, who was arrested on Thanksgiving. Authorities say Sykes visited the 15-year-old victim in Huntsville at least twice and had sex with her at least once. And in Fairhope, hundreds of mourners turned out for the funeral of the South Alabama Sheriff's deputy who was killed in the line of duty. A U.S. flag covered the casket of Baldwin County Sc Deputy Scott Ward as it was escorted into the Fairhope Civic Center today. And still to come on Troy Trojan Vision Nightly News, the basketball team prepares for their matchup tonight against UAB. Justin McNally will give us the details in sports. But first, the economy is approaching a cliff and political parties are working on a last-minute effort to avoid, a fall and to avoid falling into another recession. We'll have more on that after the break. Both the President and Congress look for ways to press their case on the fiscal cliff. I'm Danielle Nottingham on Capitol Hill. I'll have the story coming up. For me, you know, professionally, uh, I wanted a degree that, that actually means something. And Troy had a great reputation academically. There's a number of, you know, folks in Congress that have degrees from Troy. Uh, so, you know, I think that tells you an awful lot. On campus or online, Troy offers you an extraordinary education that's respected around the world. Troy University. It's all you need to know. I'm Rich Nugent, and I'm a United States Representative up in Washington, D.C., and uh, I'm a Troy Trojan. kitchen surfaces, utensils, and hands with soapy water. One in six Americans will get sick from food poisoning this year. Keep your family safer. Check your steps at foodsafety.gov. From the high-definition digital production studios of Troy University, you're watching the award-winning Troy Trojan Mission Nightly News. And now for a look at what's happening across the nation and around the world, we'll go to Rachel Scarborough at the Global News Desk. Rachel? Thanks, Judson. President Obama meets with small business owners today as he focuses on the fiscal cliff crisis. The president is spending much of the week working on a solution to keep a series of tax increases and spending cuts from going into, into effect at the end of the year if Congress doesn't act. Tomorrow he meets with the middle class families. Danielle Nottingham reports. 
President Obama is taking his plan for avoiding the fiscal cliff on the road to turn up pressure on Republicans. Well, the president believes very strongly that the American people matter in this debate because this debate is about them. Unless a deal is reached, nearly $600 billion in automatic spending cuts and tax hikes will kick in January 1st. The president made his case for extending tax cuts for the middle class and allowing bush era tax cuts to expire for the wealthiest Americans to small business owners at the White House Tuesday. He plans to make the same push on a trip to Pennsylvania later this week. The Senate's Republican leader says the president should come back to the negotiating table. The time for campaigning is over. It's time to act. House Republicans returned to Capitol Hill Tuesday. Some spent the day in closed-door meetings. They plan to sit down with small business owners in the coming days to counter the president's message. Republicans say raising taxes on top earners would hurt small businesses and cost jobs, but insist they're open to more tax revenue through reform. It can't be about raising taxes on the people who create jobs in the economy. Everyone has an eye on the deadline. They've talked some happy talk about doing revenues, but we only have a couple weeks to get something done. If Congress does not find a compromise, economists say the country could be plunged into another recession. Danielle Nottingham, CBS News, Washington. Forensic teams in the West Bank city of Ramallah have exhumed the body of Yasser Arafat. They are trying to determine if someone killed a longtime Palestinian leader. CBS's Rita Nissan reports from London. Palestinian leaders laid wreaths outside the West Bank grave of Yasser Arafat after forensic experts exhumed his body. International investigators took samples from his remains to determine if someone poisoned him. Now. We will wait for the evidence. Arafat died eight years ago at a hospital in France after an unexplained illness. Some Palestinians, including Arafat's widow, have blamed Israel for his death. Israel has repeatedly denied the allegation. A murder investigation began last summer after a Swiss lab found high levels of a deadly radioactive substance, polonium-210, on Arafat's clothing. Scientists said they needed to examine his remains to know more. Big blue tarps around Arafat's grave kept prying eyes away as workers drilled through layers of concrete to reach the tomb. Some of Arafat's supporters were opposed to disturbing his gravesite. Others feel it was necessary to find the truth. <laughs> this man says we have to know why he died because he represents the Palestinian people and the Arab world. Experts from Switzerland, France and Russia will test the samples. It could take months for the results to come back and even then the mystery may not be solved. Polonium decomposes quickly. So even if Arafat was murdered, experts say they may never know. Rita Nissan for CBS News. Flood warnings are still in place across Britain after torrential rain forced hundreds from their homes. Residents say they haven't seen anything like this in years. CBS's Tina Krause reports from London. Emergency crews used boats to rescue people and animals trapped after floodwater surrounded homes and buildings in northern Wales. And all the 20 odd years I've lived here, it's never gone over this flood bank. It's got to the top and gone down. This is the first time it's ever done this. Officials evacuated hundreds of homes after the river Elwe broke its banks. Days of heavy rain are causing flooding across Wales and England. The ground is saturated and the water doesn't have anywhere to go. Cars are underwater and boxes from stores are now floating in the streets. Firefighters are filling sandbags, trying to keep the water from reaching more homes and businesses. 70,000 homes are at risk of being washed out. The water started rising in St. Asaph overnight. People tried to grab what they could before getting out. We've got as much as we could upstairs and on uh, chairs and stuff, but, you know, what can you do? It's been an exceptionally wet few months in Britain, but forecasters say the latest system is on its way out, giving the water a chance to recede. Tina Krause, CBS News, London. Just to see more stories from across the country and around the world, such as what an actor is saying about his show, you can tune into Trojan Vision Global News right after the nightly news. Now back to you, Judson.
Thank you, Rachel. Now Justin McNally joins us for a look at sports. So Justin, big game coming up tonight for the Trojan men's basketball team. Uh, that's right. The Trojan men's basketball team takes on the UAB Blazers tonight. They're in-state rival, and they got a big key to their puzzle uh, back this past Sunday against Alabama State. But I'll get to that more here in sports. Right. Usually when a team loses a big-time score for their first couple of games, that team is assumed to lose all of those games. Well, the men's basketball team found a way to be 3-2 and two entering a matchup with Alabama State a game which saw a return of one of their key players. The leading returning scorer from last year's basketball team saw his first bit of action Sunday against Alabama State. Justin Wright, who had off-season surgery on his knee, checked into the game for the first time in the 2012 season and was just happy to be back on the court. I didn't think I was going to go in right away. I, was, I just wanted to get in and, uh, you know me, I wanted to go out there and compete all the time. So I wanted to be out there when, when I didn't get a chance right away. I was not down, a little frustrated, but uh, definitely when I went out there and got my chance, I was happy to be out there. The junior guard averaged 10.3 points per game last year for the Trojans and was hoping to carry his impressive play over into the season. But after some time away from the game, there were some minor kings he still had to work out. Yeah, I must went out with my shooting shirt on. And I think I'm going to do that at the beginning of the first half. <laughs> it's been a while. I'm just trying to get back in the swing of things. So. I suppose I remembered my jersey. The surgery was a setback for the guard who was set to lead the team offensively. And Wright knows he still has a way to go to get back to his full potential. Yeah, I thought I, I, thought I moved well. I mean, obviously not where I'm going to be in a couple weeks from now. But uh, for the first time, I felt like I was moving pretty good. I still saw stuff a little slow just because I haven't seen anything but our guys in a while. So I saw stuff a little slow. Lift wasn't there, but that, that's all going to come around. I'll be fine. Wright finished Sunday's game with three points on one of six from the field. His return hopes to propel the team for the remainder of the season. And speaking of the basketball team, the men's team has a chance to do something they have never done before. Beat their in-state rival, the UAB Blazers. The Trojans have tried on seven different occasions, but have lost every single time. The Trojans dropped last year's game to the Blazers 71-59 in Birmingham, but this year the game is in the new Trojan Arena, but the Trojans are 2-0 on the year. But when it comes to UAB, head coach Don Mayshew does not see why they are considered our rivals. Played them six or seven times, and we've lost all six or seven. We're 0 for 7, I guess. Uh, we haven't beat UAB yet, so that's not a rivalry game because you, you can't have a rivalry if you never win. UAB can really shoot the basketball. They've got some great shooters on the outside, so it'll be a different game. But I think if we're ready to play, it'll be a very competitive game and uh, should be good for the fans. The Trojans hope to prove Maestri wrong and make this game a rivalry in his eyes as they take on the Blazers tonight at 7 in Trojan Arena. And even though basketball season has just started, the softball team is in full swing recruiting players for the next season. Head coach Melanie Davis announced Monday the addition of six ladies to the Trojan team for the following season. Abby Ellison, Jordan Gray, Mackenzie Kaler, Savannah Thomas, Meg Willis, and Becca Harley will all be Troy Trojans come 2013. Davis said that the class is strong athletically and academically and will no doubt take them to the next level regionally and nationally. So as you can see, Judson, Rachel, you know, we got the big game for the Trojans tonight at home. Maybe the basketball team can finally go out there and get the big win against UAB that they've been searching for all this time. Yeah, it was a really uh, powerful soundbite from Maestri right there. Um, hopefully the Trojans will get some confidence playing in that new beautiful arena. Uh, that's right. Maybe they can prove him wrong and make this game into some sort of rivalry for him. Yeah, thanks a lot, Justin. Right. Thanks. Coming up on Troy, Trojan Vision, not in use, a Holocaust survivor will share her story in Trojan Talk. But first, we've seen light rain all day today. When's it going to go away, Bree? Earlier this morning, we said hello to those rain conditions, and as we move throughout the evening, we can say goodbye. I'll have more coming up in weather. Today is a special day. Today we gather as a nation and as an international community to recognize the selfless decision of one of the most influential women of our time. She's been recognized by religious figures and politicians around the world. To us, she's just Rachel. But to the rest of the world, she is the woman who, after having one too many drinks, chose not to drive home buzzed. 
here today to honor Rachel is the family whose lives she spared. From the High Definition Digital Production Studios of Troy University, you're watching the award-winning Troy Trojan Mission Nightly News. And now Bree Sanders joins us for a look at weather. So Bree, today's been sort of a dreary day. What can we expect for the rest of the week? Well, we have been seeing those gloomy conditions in our area, but as we move throughout the rest of the week, it looks like that sunshine is going to come right on back. I'll get more into that in just a moment. First, let's take a look at our current conditions. In our area right now, we have cloudy skies, the temperatures at 60 degrees, dew points at 57 degrees, humidity is at 90 percent, barometers at 30.12 inches and falling. Winds are coming in from the north northwest at about four miles per hour. Today's stats, we had a high today of 60 degrees, a low of 41. There was almost an inch of rain in our area. The sun rises at 6.22 a.m. and it should set at 4.40, well, it's set at 4.40 p.m. Temperatures around the state, overall the state is experiencing a mixture of conditions right now. Mobile coming in with a high at 63, Huntsville with a low at 43, Birmingham at 48, Montgomery at 61, Troy at 60, Phoenix City at 55, and Dothan at 55. As we look at our temperatures in our area, on average, we're at about upper 40s right now in the Birmingham area in our state. But as we move throughout the rest of the southeast, those temperatures increase just a little bit into about the mid-50s right there in South Carolina. Temperatures around the United States, as we take a look at the West Coast, their departure from normal is about 13 degrees warmer than what they've been seeing lately. And as we take a closer look into our area, we're actually about 7 degrees cooler than what we've been seeing lately, possibly because of those rain conditions and... This cold front that pushed through our state earlier this morning, bringing that rain into our area. As we take a closer look, we see those rain conditions pushing further towards the southeast, going into Georgia and possibly hitting Florida sometime tomorrow. Precipitation forecast over the next 48 hours, it looks like we'll have some light rain pushing through the southernmost part of our state, but we shouldn't be experiencing any in our area. Like I said, moving to tomorrow, we should remain clear in our area even on Thursday. Still no rain. As we close out our weekend on Friday, we still should have a beautiful weekend ahead of us. And on Saturday, the high will actually get to about 70 degrees, saying hello to December. Tonight's forecast, we have partly cloudy skies in our area, a 20% chance of rain, light winds coming in from the north at about 6 miles per hour with a low of 40 degrees. As we move into tomorrow, we'll actually have a mostly sunny day, light winds coming in from the north at about 8 miles per hour with a high of 64 Looking at our four-day forecast, moving into tomorrow, like I said, the high will get to 64 degrees. That low will get down to 34. On Thursday, those temperatures will continue to rise. The temperature will get to about 67 for the high on Thursday. That low will get to about 40 degrees. On Friday, getting warmer, that high gets to about 70 degrees with a low of 46. And on Saturday, the high gets up to 73. So, Rachel, we've been experiencing some rain pretty much all day. The gloomy skies outside, no sun in our area. But as we move throughout the rest of the week, the Conditions will definitely be looking up for us. It'll definitely be getting warmer as we head throughout our weekend. Like I said, Saturday is December the 1st, and it doesn't look like those winter conditions are going to be coming anywhere in anytime soon. It looks like spring is here. That's right. Thank oh, you man. so much.